Hello and welcome to more of my trading stuff. In this video we're going to go through the optimization using CTrader. This is just the first part in what will be a series of videos because it's quite a long subject so we've decided to chop it down into to handy manageable sections. So in this first part I'm going to go through the various options available how to set them up and how to get started with optimizing a bot and then in the next video we'll go into far more detail about the methodology behind optimization and also some of its limitations and we will also cover how optimization can help you with your manual trading the first thing we need to do is to actually find the bot that we want to optimize and in your list under automate you will have a lot of the, the standard or sample bots included with ctrader you can go through and delete all of these but i just use the search button to find the one that i want before we start optimizing we want to see what sort of performance our bot is giving and this will give us a benchmark so we can see how we're improving it or not by optimizing it so the first thing we need to do is to go and have a look at the parameters we're going to use for our back test the quantity we're going to leave at 0.1 which equates to about 78 pence per pip on IC markets I'm going to use a a default stop and limit of 15 pips. The source needs to be set to close and we're going to work with closed candles. The simple moving average which is my slow one I'm going to leave set to 55 and my exponential moving average I'm going to leave set to 21. We can then move over to the backtesting tab. So we're going to set our parameters for backtesting. The starting capital I set to 1000. So this is a demo account that I normally run it with a thousand pounds and see where it goes from there. For currencies on IC markets, the commission is 30 per million. And we're going to change this from N1 bars that just gives you the open price of each candle and we're going to change that to being tick data from server and what this means is that we will get the actual spread at that point in time because as you know the spread changes throughout the day and minute by minute so this means we will have a very very accurate spread to use in our calculations the next thing I need to do is to select the date window to backtest from. So I'm going to go from the 1st of June up until yesterday, which is the 13th of November. I'm then going to click on the play button and this will run the backtest for us. The first thing it does is download all of the tick data to your machine and then it runs the actual back test on your machine. This then displays our equity chart and we'll just have a quick look at the trade statistics. So we've made a total profit of £109.84p and we've got a total trades of 48 of which 30 are winnings and we will compare the results that we get from our optimization with this the next thing to do is to pop along to our optimization tab and start working our way through the parameters here so again for the back testing settings I've got my starting capital as a thousand, my commission as 30 per million, but with this I'm actually going to use M1 bars from server and a fixed spread of one pip. The reason for doing this is purely for speed in that 
if we're testing tick data with every single combination on our parameters, it would take an awfully long time to go through. So when we're using higher time frames, it's okay to use M1 bars for optimization. Then we'll re test our optimized results to get a very, very accurate number. Next along the list, we actually have our bot parameters. I'm unticked for time frame because I only want to test this on an hourly time frame and I've unticked the lots because I don't want it to change the amount that I'm staking per trade. The stop and the limit I'm going to change so we're going to make this from 10 to 50 for both the stop and the limit. We leave the source set to close and again untick the closed candles and leave that set to yes. The SMA will leave between 50 and 100 and the EMA between 5 and 26 to make sure that our slow moving average is genuinely a slow moving average and the fast one genuinely is a fast moving average. With all of these, we've got the step set to 1. Next on our list is our optimization criteria. We've got two options here. We've got standard or custom. For this, we're going to leave it as their standard and we'll go through this section and the implications of changing it in further videos. Further along, we have our optimization method. We've got their genetic algorithm or their grid. We've found that the genetic algorithm gives quite a good result and takes an awful lot less time to run than the, the grid or exhaustive search method. And again, we're going to more details than this in future videos. We then have our resources. And this is the amount of CPU within your machine that CTrader is going to use for backtesting. And it defaults to 50%. So if you want to carry on using your machine for something else while it's backtesting, I'd leave this at 50%. If you're just going to go away and leave it running overnight, then you can set this higher. Then we need to select our date window again. So we're going to go from the 1st of June until yesterday. So this is the same window that we use for back testing. And we're going to select the auto select the best pass so that when it's running, it will show us the best results on screen as it's going through. Then we click on play. As you can see on screen, it's telling us the number of passes it has finished, the elapsed time and the time remaining. And at this point, I'll sit here and drink some squash and we can fast forward in time to when it finishes. When it finishes, it will display on screen the best pass. This isn't necessarily the one that has made the most money. It depends on the profile that you've selected and it's partly based on your account drawdown. On screen, we have the equity chart and this shows us along the bottom the trade number and up the side the actual amount of money. So it's not the date or the time along the bottom of the screen, it's actually the trade number. So if we look, we've got trade six here. And if we pop along to our history tab, we can look down and we can see where trade six was. Next on our list are the trade statistics. And this gives us a helpful summary of the profitability and obviously the statistics of these numbers. So we have the net profit, we have this for all trades and then next to it it's split out for long trades and short trades. And the profit factor, an overall one and again 
for long trades and short trades. And you can see here that there is a, a real difference between the profit factor on long trades and short trades. We then have our total number of trades, our winning trades, as well as our max balance drawdown and max equity drawdown. So you can see over all trades, our max balance drawdown was just over 12% using these numbers. On the history tab, we have a list of every single trade that was taken using these parameters. So we have the entry time, the exit time, the entry and exit prices and also your gross and net amounts. So your net amount takes into account the commission that you'll be paying on this trade. The log is a trade log and we use this for some debugging purposes so if you have a problem with a bot then we may very well ask you to copy this into an Excel spreadsheet and send it over to us. And one of the most important tabs is the actual parameters that the optimization has come up with. So here we can see that we have a stop of 49, a limit of 43, an SMA of 84 and an EMA of 19. As we said, the best pass may not necessarily be the most profitable. So we can sort this table on the column headings by clicking on them. So if I scroll down to the very bottom of the list, we will see here we have got our most profitable entry and we can click on that and that will tell us the parameters used. We can also then see the equity chart for this along with the trade statistics, the history, the log and as we started off the parameters. So with this we made £381 profit, 22 trades of which 17 were winning, 5 losing. If we want to use these parameters in our bot we click on the apply button and then if I go back here and click on our parameters you can see it's copied those numbers that are on screen here over onto our parameters box that we can now use to back test and see what the differences are between using the M1 bar data and the tick by tick data. So as you can see on our trade statistics here we made a profit of £381.39. So now if we go into back testing and run this as a back test, we will see what number it comes up with. And I would expect to see some differences, but hopefully not too vast. So as you can see, this has increased the net profit to 385 pounds and 22p and some of that may very well be the difference in spread at the time that we went into trades because we're now using accurate data so we will have accurate spread information rather than using an average of one pip. As we said we will be going into the optimization and the theory behind it and how to use it a lot more in future videos. Hopefully you've liked this one and it's proved useful. So click on the like button. If you've got any comments to make, anything you don't understand or anything you'd like us to cover in future videos, then please add that into the comments section below. And if you haven't already, click on subscribe and then the little bell icon to be notified when we post any new videos. So thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video.